The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines lowrider as a customized car with a chassis that has been lowered so that it narrowly clears the ground. Lowrider also is used to describe the person driving such a vehicle, and both car and driver have long been potent cultural symbols, especially among Mexican Americans. In the 1980s and 90s, many cities passed anti-cruising ordinances because police departments and the public often saw lowriders as menacing, connected to drugs and gangs. It's taken decades, but that perception is finally changing and nowhere is the transformation more pronounced than in the lowrider hotbed of northern New Mexico. The story will continue in a moment. The ride will be a little bit of rough. That's okay. That's what hydraulics is. Well, but we look cool. Yeah. <laughs> On Good Friday, 2024, we're cruising down Riverside Drive in Española, New Mexico, with Epi Martinez and his family in his 1953 Chevy Bel Air, his pride and joy. You gotta have your siren. You gotta have your siren. He's been cruising this road in this vintage car since he was a kid with his dad at the wheel. And Good Friday has long been the day for local lowriders. This is the grand opening of spring, you know, so. Everybody look forward, as you can see today. Oh my God, you're gonna, I mean, it's, it's, it's blow my mind. Blow, definitely. Martinez is leading a candy-colored caravan of cars from his Viejitos Car Club. That's old men in Spanish. Española calls itself the lowrider capital of the world. And on Good Friday, the Viejitos were joined by lowriders from many other local car clubs for a chrome and tail fin celebration of their culture. Some were shining up and staying put to be admired, while others showed off the crazy hydraulic gymnastics lowriders are known for. Yo! Among New Mexico's lowriders, Epi Martinez is known as the man who makes cars do that. So people come to you yes, yes. to have the hydraulics put in their cars? Yes, 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. How many have you done? Oh, I've done over 500, probably. The hydraulics in his own precious 53 Bel Air are fairly modest. We got ourselves here, something not too much. I got a two-pump setup. It's mostly aircraft. This is aircraft technology. Exactly, but... In this in, old car. Exactly. Those hydraulic pumps, designed to operate aircraft flaps and landing gear, are controlled by switches at the driver's seat. <laughs> See? So that's really, that's all it really does. It doesn't go too much because, uh -huh. you know, I don't want to hurt it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Over the years, Martinez has installed hydraulics that seem guaranteed to hurt cars, turning them into what lowriders call hoppers that drew competitors and crowds to this Española parking lot on Good Friday Look at that. to see who could jump highest. Whether they hopped to the sky or sat ever so low to the ground, each lowrider we saw that day seemed to say, here I am. That's an expression of who you are, so it's kind of an extension of your personality. Delubina and Eric Montoya were there with their 1947 Chevrolet Fleetmaster convertible. It's sleek, it's classic, it's beautiful. It's kind of me. <laughs> it's round, it's shapey, it's shiny. Why is it me? <laughs> Lowriders are all about that, right? They're the car amongst cars. They're going to be the one that pops. Patricia Trujillo is an Española native a college professor, and deputy cabinet secretary of New Mexico's Department of Higher Education. She told us the roots of the lowrider culture here stretch back to just after World War II. You had many Mexican-Americans going into the Army and then coming back and still being treated as second-class citizens. And so a lot of those people basically created this counterculture to be able to speak back and say, we belong here too. It's almost like a saunter or a swagger in vehicle form, right? It's sort of like embracing the Americanness, the car culture. Yes but making it your own mm -hmm. and saying, I'm part of America, but I'm not part of this mainstream. I'm doing my own thing here. Yeah, and we are our own thing. 
So low and slow instead of fast and furious. Yes, absolutely. These are Buicks and Pontiacs and Chevys from the glory days of Detroit. Customized with elaborate interiors, intricate engraving, and kaleidoscopic colors in the paint jobs, the over-the-top style isn't for everyone, but these cars are all labors of love, whether do-it-yourself jobs or those restored by professionals for tens of thousands of dollars. This ends up about 100 coats of material when it's all said and done. 100 coats of paint. 100 coats of paint. Rob Vanderslice is a legendary painter from Albuquerque and a rare gringo in New Mexico's lowrider world. Why not utilize the tape where you end up with a nice little point through the middle. Famous for using tape and spray paint to lay down layers of different colors, as he demonstrates in weekly YouTube tutorials. We're talking hours and hours, and it just is a beautiful breakup of like a darker orange, a medium orange, and then a light orange. It's kind of a fan of colors. Vanderslice started painting lowriders in the late 1980s. That's just about when gangster rap artists popularized the cars in music videos. That contributed to a public impression of lowriders as connected to gangs and drugs. Back in the day, were most of your clients involved with gangs and drugs? Back then, I did a car for just about every gang you could think, you know what I mean? Vanderslice himself had a years-long addiction to crystal meth while he was making a name for himself painting all those cars. Congratulations on, on being clean. Thank you. How Thank long? You. How long? 13 clean? years clean. Now. How'd you do it? I uh, got in trouble. I'm a three-time convicted felon, and uh, the last time I just said, you know what, I'm done. His personal rehabilitation parallels the path traveled by New Mexico's lowriders. Counterculture rebels turned gangsters now steadily rolling into the mainstream. So you have gone from painting cars for gangs to painting cars for the Albuquerque Police Department. Right, right. That's a big leap. Yeah, that's a huge leap. In the lowrider's leap, Patricia Trujillo remembers a particular pivot. In the plaza in Santa Fe, um, uh, lowriding had been banned for many years. Santa Fe is the capital of New Mexico and its artistic center. So when the city's mayor not only dropped the ban on cruising, but declared a lowrider day in 2016, Trujillo says cars slow rolled in by the hundreds. There was this real shift in culture in that moment of recognizing uh, lowriders as an important part of our heritage, an important part of the artistry of our communities. And I really feel like that marked a new moment in New Mexico. So we're all a family. Joanne and Arthur Medina, everyone calls him Lolo, personify the morphing of lowriders' image in the Española Valley. She was in junior high school when they met more than 40 years ago. As we were driving into Española, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that car. And then I was like, look at the guy in it. I told my aunt. Was his car better than everybody else's car? We don't like to compete with ah, people, okay. but yeah, It stood out more. It stood out more, a lot more. You can see it from miles. <laughs> that car is still in a makeshift museum full of lowriders outside their home, with a few in the yard awaiting makeovers. Lolo's masterpiece, covered front, back, and sides with murals depicting the life of Jesus, was being repainted the day we were there. Is your car making a statement? Yes. Yes. And what's that statement? It's our fishing net. Wherever we take our cars, people are drawn to his artwork. People are drawn to what we've done to the cars and who we are, and people know us from all over. So it draws people it in. It draws people. But if drawing attention was once the only goal, they're now using that attention to help kids and serve their community. Words now, we're saying family, community, faith. In the past, words associated with lowriders were gangs, mm -hmm. drugs, and crime. Yes, that's very true. What changed? I think what changed in a big way is that we started... Um, being out more in the community to 
kind of volunteer. We're always here to encourage. Yes. We're always here to help. We saw a need for the homeless. And I said, OK, let's do a coat drive and a clothing drive. Man, we got five huge truckloads of hmm. jackets and clothes and shoes. Is it almost as simple as the original lowriders mm -hmm. um, have just grown out of their rebellious ways? I wouldn't say they've grown out of rebellion. I think that they've redefined it. So what's the definition of rebellion now? Rebellion now is healing, to be that beacon of hope, right? Española needs hope, with rates of poverty, crime, and drug addiction well above state and national averages. Despair is part of the landscape. A lot of our kids are from broken homes. Ben Sandoval is director of the YMCA Teen Center in Española. There's drugs. There's bad influences. What we try to do through the Teen Center is to provide them a safe place. In 2023, Sandoval got a grant from the DEA, yes, the Drug Enforcement Administration, for a project to build lowrider bicycles. How does that help with the at-risk kids? First of all, it gives them an opportunity to say, hey, I got to get to the teen center after school every Wednesday. They have to feel that they're valued and their role as the engineer, as the designer, as the planner, they do it all. The finished bikes were so creative, so impressive, the prestigious Museum of Spanish Colonial Art in Santa Fe mounted a special exhibition to put them on display. It really is quite beautiful art. Thank that you. These kids have created. It's remarkable. It was just this vibrant buzz of happiness in the room during the opening. Yeah, the kids hadn't seen them like this before. No, never. And I'd sit back with three or four youth and I'd say, look at that. They're, they're taking pictures of your bike. That's what you did. Car shows now feature lowrider bicycles with trophies for the best. Same for kids with radio-controlled cars that tilt and bounce. And the fanciest car shows rival any museum display. Now when you see cruises, it literally can feel like a, a moving art exhibit, right? As you're watching it go by. A moving art exhibit, that's yes. pretty good. Joanne Medina's artwork is a glittering Grand Prix. She and Lolo loved showing it off for us on an afternoon cruise in the hills above Española. All cars have a different style when you're cruising them. This one, I have to tell you, is eye-catching. Thank you. That's what I wanted. 